which means a new schoolroom. Yay! Hi, I'm Heather. I'm a homeschooling mom of two, and on this channel, we cover homeschool and motherhood topics, product reviews, and day in the life videos where you can get a peek into what it looks like to be a homeschool mom. And on today's video, I'm gonna be showing you our homeschool room. Just a disclaimer, we homeschool throughout the whole house. So reading can be done on my bed, art can be done inside the school room or out in nature, uh, maybe math is done on the floor underneath the coffee table. So we don't just um, have the school room as a place that the kids go to school. Really, it's just a place to house everything that we need to have learning happen every day at home. I hope you like this video. If you do, go ahead and subscribe. Welcome if you're new and let's get into the school room. So this is our simple homeschool room. This over here is our art cube. I got this art cube at Target and it's super inexpensive. And then I got these cute little baskets at the dollar store and then the mason jars at the dollar store. And this is just where our art and nature goes. As you can see up here, this is kind of like our little nature center. And then we have all of our art and then above it, we have some of their artwork hanging. This is our little art caddy for any of our watercolors um, or any of our hand colors. We also have our dot paints that are in here. If you go down here, I have these cute little boxes I got at the Dollar Tree and then all of these cards, flashcards, were either from the dollar section at Target or from the dollar store. And we go through them. Um, what I love to do is pull these cards out and put them over by the board and have my kindergartners spell out the uh, different sight words. So that gives them just an activity to do while I'm doing reading. So I have a lot of people ask, how do you get work done when you have um, little ones? Well, make fun little activities and games out of them. Um, we also have, like I said, these cute little baskets that I got at the Dollar Tree. And this just houses a couple more of our art supplies. So our pastel oils, our sketch pencils. Um, I recommend getting these right now back to school is happening but you can always find them at michael's or on amazon actually um, for different deals so i recommend searching your art supplies on amazon that is a great place to do that then in this basket here um, i got these big dice off of amazon and i love them because we use them for math games we roll the dice we add or subtract and that's a really fun way uh, to play and then in here again i love clear bags because it allows him to see my kindergartner to see what he's getting at so these are just different magnets that i got off of amazon and then some more magnets that i got off of amazon and then these are really fun i got these on amazon as well these are number dice and so these are great for uh using this idea that we had with the big dice but using it with numbers. So we take these, we roll them out, we jump up and down that many times, we add that together, we subtract that. So we really do make our math very interactive and fun, but I love things in clear bags. And as you can tell, I love Amazon for school supplies. This is just another way that we use the alphabet. I got these letters um, from my mother-in-law. They're actually stamps. So sometimes I'll just take a piece of paper out, I'll put this card out, one of the cards, and he will have to stamp out for self to find it and then stamp out um, those different words. And it's just a really good activity to do. This is one of two bookshelves that we have inside the schoolroom. This is the curriculum and literature section. And this is really where we house all of the curriculum that we have. Now you can see that's not a lot of curriculum. And that's because in our simple homeschool, I get rid of anything that we do not need. So down here in this low basket that I got for $5 at Target, I have the manipulatives for my smaller child, as well as puzzles and quiet activities to be doing while we're doing our read alouds for history and literature. Floor puzzles are great. We have about six floor puzzles that we rotate through. And these are really fun because um, something like this, which you can get on Amazon, um, allows them to do some floor play, um, being on the floor while you're reading, moving around. Uh, without having to be sitting still. So floor puzzles are a great way. And then we just learn off of them. I love this one because it has a lot of the, um, well, it has all of the states and then it has what their name is and then just different things that are related to the state. So Melissa and Doug puzzles are one of our favorites. We have United States. We also have a dinosaur one and one about automobiles and just floor puzzles are a great way to get them to start learning um, without them knowing that they're learning. 
in the mornings, what I do is I take out all of the um, curriculum that they're gonna need and I set it in front of their um, chairs so that they know what they need to be doing so that they can see um, what they need to complete for that day. The library is the place where we source almost 90% of all of the books that we have for our homeschool. This is just a collection. What I do is I look into our history or our um, nature studies or language arts and I look at the books that are two weeks ahead of time and put them on hold. So I'm not actually going and filing through the library. I am putting them on hold and someone in the family will run over to the library and pick up those holds. And that is how we get most of our books. About 90% of our books come from the library because as much as I love having books around the house, they do become overwhelming. And so this is a great way to just have those books. So this is actually some of next week's material that we're gonna use and I'll source those and put those in the baskets that we use for history and language arts. The next shelf is all of our library books that we're using for the time, as well as our art books and our whiteboards that I got at the Dollar Tree with these cute little um, picture holders. And that is what we use for a lot of our handwriting and just different things when we need smaller whiteboards. I am a big fan of baskets. On top there holds all of our larger um, school supplies. So our large roll of paper and different things like that. And then right up here is actually, I think, still just a blank basket. Yeah, nothing in it yet, but I'm sure I'll fill it with something. And then this one just has all of our different paper that we use. So any of our art paper or our lined paper if we're using it. And then clipboards are a must have for homeschool. So you can do homeschool on the go. On this bookshelf, I also have this little black um, paper holder that I got at the Dollar Tree. And that actually is just where they, they don't really turn in assignments, but if they have different artwork and copy work that they're putting together, um, that's where that goes. And then every couple months I take it out, I put it in a little folder, and then I make a book at the end of the year for them of the different things that they have done and created. So this well-loved and used table came from Ikea and it was just the um, tabletop and then we bought the legs separately. I think the whole table cost like $25, $30, super easy. And then I also have up here where their pencils, crayon and color pencils are. And then their planners are always out on the desk and in each day um, that it goes through what they have for their schedule. So for my kindergartner, we started right here. So this is what it looks like. I write out their daily schedule and I'll go through a whole scheduling um, video for you later, but this just gives you an example of what uh, it looks like. This is our whiteboard and on it I have these really fun magnet letters that we use in for our kindergartner um, to spell out words and I got those um, online at Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below, but this board was um, actually just from a yard sale. So I highly recommend checking out yard sales and Facebook groups for people getting rid of this stuff at the end of the year. This piece here is um, a really special piece. This was my mother-in-law's craft cabinet and we have now turned it into just the random supplies that you have. So extra pens and pencils and paints and um, some additional crafting paper and things like that. And then we also have our system that we use for music. Um, we don't actually do any study of different artists, but we do listen to classical music or music, um, depending on the history lesson that we're learning, music of that history period. But just something that just kind of gets us in the mood for what we're doing or if we just want to listen to music while we're doing our art. This is our Lego section and also our books for nature and history. And these were um, found on a site super cheap. I think they were like $10, super cheap. So again, check those sites. And then down here, we have all of our Legos organized in color. This is a great little space for the kids while I'm doing read alouds or if they just have some free time, they wanna come in here. And then we have some display shelves for their creations. Up here are the books that we use. I like using these baskets and having the books out for literature that we're using for that study. So this week we're going through ponds and different creatures and ecosystems of the ponds. So these are all sourced from our library. And then in history, we are in um, ancient Egypt right now. And so these are just additional readings that they have that they can choose from uh, when we are in free reading time. And then this shelf over here really just houses some more baskets that I love. Um, a puzzle that we go through regularly and have uh, to point out when we are doing different American studies. 
um, our Bible series and uh, my husband and I like to collect different um, old Bibles and then a whole Bible encyclopedia that was gifted to the kids this year. And then really just some of our collection of books, not very interesting, but the books that, um, that my husband and I have collected, we have pared down our selection to this because we want to live as simple as we can. Um, but that is this bookshelf. So that is our schoolroom. Thank you so much for watching. My question to you today is, where are you watching from? Are you a homeschooler right now? And if you are, how many years have you been homeschooling? I love, 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 love. Actually, almost more than actually making videos, I like just connecting with other homeschool moms here on YouTube. So I wanna know where are you from and how long have you been homeschooling? And if you have any other general homeschool questions, ask them down there in the comments because I'm gonna be doing a Q&A answering all of your homeschool questions and possibly having some other homeschool moms answer those right along with me. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you like this video and if you do, click that like button. I'll see you next time guys, bye. I did it, I did it, I did it. This is how technical I am. On a notebook. Yes, that's it.